the officials giving an update on what exactly happened, what they know so far. This will do it for my time here on the desk. Andrew Kraft takes it over from here. Let's listen in to Kentucky. that we had to do, but the other vehicles involved in and of themselves, it was a very serious accident. We had somebody that was uh, very seriously injured and it was Louisville EMS that very swiftly jumped on, treating that patient, getting them transported down to uh, UofL hospital and then coming back as well to make sure that uh, any other patients would be handled. So this is what we would refer to as a high angle rescue. We have uh, uh, rescue two, which is down at 12th and Jefferson at our fire headquarters that handles all the water rescue, uh, as well as uh, ropes. We also have rescue 11, which is out towards the highlands that was there to help as well. Uh, rescue six, which is another water company, uh, is down in the Portland neighborhood. These were all on scene. So it was a combination of that. You have not only the high angle that's going on from the bridge that you see here in this picture, uh, but we had our boats down in the uh, water beneath in the event uh, you see where that semi truck was stuck there and it was basically kind of wedged in. Uh, we had to be concerned. Uh, what if it slips? What if it falls? If it doesn't hold still, we uh, then would have to transfer to a dive rescue. So we had our rescue divers on hand, ready to go at a moment's notice, should that be the case that they could get in the water. Uh, so that was rescue six and rescue two down there. You see what we did is we took one of these, uh, one of our aerial devices to set up. If anybody has ever done any recreational climbing or uh, rappelling, this is similar to that in that you have to set up a high point, but we're just being lowered down. So firefighter Carden has a harness. He's uh, hooked into that. He's got ropes. They've got two systems set up, as you see, the two ropes. Uh, so now he could have that as a safety, but then also to make sure that he's going to be tied in once he got down there to rescue the driver. We were able to communicate with her from the moment we were on the bridge. Her window was open. Uh, fortunately, there wasn't severe damage to the cab because that would have then involved us not only getting down to her to get uh, her out, but also having to extricate her once there. So that was very fortunate. Uh, they got to her. I, I Once again, I mentioned this earlier, she was cool as a cucumber. I spoke to some of our brothers and sisters with the Teamsters. They said that uh, she is a military veteran uh, and I'd obviously helped her uh, keep her, her calm because she was amazing. Uh, there's always the concern as you're going to somebody being rescued, obviously they're scared. This is a horrible situation. She's dangling off the edge of a bridge, doesn't know if it's going to slip in, uh, but she stayed very, very calm. Firefighter Carden got to her, was able to uh, keep her calm and assist her, not only had to cut her out of her seatbelt, uh, but then helped her to get into the rescue harness that she was able to wear and then assist her once she was uh, locked in and on that rope system so that she's safe as well, get her out and slowly move her away. When you do something like this, another uh, time that, that might be necessary, if you think workers on the side of a building, window cleaners, sometimes they might get stuck, same type of thing. It's what we call a pickoff. So they go down to pick them off of wherever they're stuck to get them to safety. You can either lower them down or you can bring them back up. In this case, we're not going to lower down because should that truck fall down into the water, we don't want to have to deal with that. But we still kept our water crews obviously there on standby if that was necessary. We brought them around back up onto the bridge. Again, she was uh, amazing and so brave through the entire thing. This is something that our firefighters train for all the time. As weird as this situation might look like, they do. They train for it. They do it hundreds of times. That's why they were able to show up very swiftly, get everything set up, get to her, get her rescued. Uh, once they were over on the bridge, she had a little emotional release and uh, was finally back to safety, which uh, was just really great. Uh, and again, I, I have to give all the shout out to these companies on the scene that just did an amazing job. It was their training that came through when it was needed, uh, and they were able to do this with absolute professionalism, swiftly and safely, uh, and get those people back and, uh, and get her back to safety. So, uh, and again, many thanks to all the other different organizations that were a part of this, from dispatch to EMS to police, and to especially to our fire companies that were out there to uh, execute this rescue. Thank you, Chief. Uh, before we open it up for questions, I just want to conclude with the four words on the Chief's patch that all of his colleagues in the Louisville Fire Department wear and that that says, honor, courage, duty, dedication. All four of these traits were exhibited today by Firefighter Carden, by his colleagues in Rescue 2, by his other colleagues in Louisville Fire, at EMS, at LMPD, that were on the scene. And not just today, but every day. Seeing events like this happen make me so proud 
to be a citizen of Louisville. We are fortunate for all of your colleague service, for all of our dedicated EMS professionals, for all of our dedicated men and women of LMPD that work every day to keep all of us in the city that we love safe. So thank you all to all of your colleagues so much for their effort. And with that, we are happy to take any questions from the media. Uh, we feel like uh, the, the bridge is safe. It uh, was last inspected in September of 2023, and it was, uh, it was rated in a fair condition. Um, as we would in any accident, any time there's, there's a crash like this, is we're certainly going to evaluate uh, the, the bridge and see if there are any kind of changes that would need to be made. But right now, we're primarily just focused on getting the bridge inspected and then reopened to traffic right now. Uh, so, but, but, but yes, the, the, the bridge is a, is a safe bridge. Um, the the, uh, the accident reconstruction is still ongoing, and until we see the results of that, I, I wouldn't be able to speculate on how the uh, truck was able to, to get in the location it was, uh, uh, hanging off the bridge. But, um, but, but certainly, though, uh, we're going to go back and we'll look at that and evaluate that. Uh, we call that an after-action evaluation that we will conduct after uh, we get the accident uh, uh, report completed, and then we'll, we'll take a look at that, certainly. But our focus right now is just on uh, the inspection, the assessment, and then reopening the bridge. How many vehicles go across that bridge? There's 24,000 vehicles per day on the bridge. I don't know the numbers that the, the bridge has increased in traffic since the tolling uh, was was instituted, um, but but currently there's um, there's four lanes on the bridge, two lanes each direction. Um, but we certainly I, I don't know that number, but we can certainly get that to you. Uh, the the lanes are about uh, ten and a half feet wide. Uh, so, so they are narrow lanes uh, all, along the bridge. The bridge uh, was built in 1929. So, uh, you know, it, at the time, of course, it, it was, uh, uh, I don't know this for certain, but I'm sure it was built as a two-lane bridge. And then as traffic increased over time, it was, uh, it was widened to, uh, to accommodate four lanes. Yeah, the, the the roadway uh, that it carries, US 31 Second Street Bridge, though, is a it's an important uh, connector into downtown Louisville. And uh, at this time, we would expect that it would still be uh, able to carry uh, commercial truck traffic into downtown Louisville. It is an important connection, uh, but certainly we will evaluate that. It's a it's got a the the roadway in this location is a 35 mile per hour roadway. So uh, uh, so and it's it does it's got uh, barrier curbs on the. Uh, outside of the travel lanes, uh, but we certainly, once we uh, see the results of the uh, accident uh, investigation, though, we will take a look at that as a, an examine and see if any changes need to be made. And do you know which way the truck was traveling uh, on the bridge before it we, um, we do not know at this time which way the, the, the but, but that will certainly be determined by law enforcement. Yeah. Accident report after. Yes. Uh, for right now, out of respect for the privacy of those involved, uh, it was four vehicles that were involved, uh, and, and a few right now are dealing with life-threatening injuries, and we'll provide more detail on that as we move forward. Okay. Thank you. The truck driver, did she sustain any injuries? And what happened on her I, I don't believe she did, the, the truck driver. So uh, when we actually were, were able to talk to her while she was in the truck, uh, she seemed stable and okay, uh, but once we got her on the bridge, we immediately turned her over to EMS, uh, transported her, uh, just to be safe, because certainly uh, an impact like that, a mechanism of injury, when you're talking about that truck that, you know, did hit something pretty hard, 
get her checked out. But, uh, you know, she was in, in good spirits for what she'd been through. I'm not sure that we know that answer right now. We'll probably have more information on that once the uh, the tower crews get there and are able to remove the truck, and we'll, we'll know more information about that. All right, thank you all very much. We'll continue to provide updates as we can, particularly as it relates to uh, traffic related to the 2nd Street Bridge uh, and what a timeline is for reopening of that. In the meantime, please be safe, take your time, be patient, and make sure you plan out your routes ahead of time uh, through the evening tonight. Thank you all very much.